In about 2007, DIVBIC, with the help of the services, introduced the military acute concussion evaluation. Also put it in a handy card so that medics and deploying providers could take it with them and have it uh, as a, a hip pocket tool to evaluate service members who've been injured or perhaps have uh, might have been exposed to a potentially concussive event, evaluate them to see if, in fact, they have been concussed. Then in 2010, solidified that with clinical practice guidelines on the management of how to manage a concussed patient in the deployed setting. This gave the medical professionals uh, understanding of what they needed to do in an easy to follow algorithm to look for things like red flags that may prompt further evaluation, but certainly to help them with a uh, evaluation to determine whether somebody has had a concussion. In addition, directive type memorandum uh, 09033, also June of 2010, helped identify, codify what steps needed to be taken so that we had an incidence-based reporting system rather than a symptom-based reporting system. And you may think, well, you know, why should that be different for a concussion as opposed to any other disease process? Well, one of the things is that we're in the military and we're very leadership driven. It gave concussion a standing with the leaders, so it was incident based. So for example, if you had been in a vehicle collision, if you were in a vehicle and had a blast, if you were within 50 meters of a blast, if you had a direct blow to your head, you would then get evaluated with that MACE card. And then determine whether or not you had a concussion. Regardless, you'd have a mandatory downtime to, to rest up, but then it would then spark additional treatment. 